In an industry where designers and trends come and go in a flash, Norma Kamali will never go out of style. She told fashion lovers a sleeping bag coat could not only be warm, it could be a showstopper when you walk down the street. She also told people a one piece can stop them in their tracks better than a bikini. You might remember this one. Yes, it was a Norma Kamali original. And when you dress Diana Ross to Rihanna, Cher to Beyonce, when you look up timeless in fashion Bibles, she is right there. Name one of the most influential women in fashion. I've worked really hard for over 50 years to try to develop designs that people told me were impossible to do. Now, rewind all that glamour and fame. At 19 years old, Norma seemed mature beyond her years, married to Eddie Kamali, who also became her business partner. Together, they opened a chic Manhattan boutique inspired by London's fashion scene in the 60s, catapulting Norma to fashion stardom. As her career skyrocketed, her marriage crumbled, and she chose to walk away from it with just $98 to her name. Norma had lost everything she'd built, but says she still had her soul. In the back of her mind, Norma carried with her the memory of meeting with an astrologer who told her she would meet the love of her life when she turned 65, something she brushed off at the time until that prediction walked into her life. Joining us now from her home is the one and only Norma Kamali. Norma, thank you so much for joining us. You look gorgeous. Thank you. You are so beautiful. Oh my God. I'm I love this Norma Kamali, and you know what? It's, I actually do own it, so it is mine. It's not a loner, and I'm so honored to wear something that you've designed you know, with you here. I got to, though, start with this astrologer. So, because um, a lot of people are watching and they're wondering, will they find the right one? So the astrologer told you this. You were 25 years old at time, and they told yes. you that you would find the love of your life much later. Take me back to when you were told that. Did you think, okay, because I've been to astrologers. I've had my palms read. I've done it all. What did you think when, when the astrologer said that? Well, it was the first time I'd ever been to an astrologer, and she did such a great take on my childhood, my dad, things nobody knew. And then um, and then finally she said, oh, and you're going to meet your soulmate when you're 65. And I said, no, 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 you must be wrong. She said, no, I'm usually right. <laughs> and we're actually still friends, believe it or not. And um, And she was right. She was right. And the truth is, I wasn't ready for a soulmate before that, To, if I really think honestly about it. What do you mean you weren't ready? Was it because of work? I mean, when you talk about leaving with, you know, what was it, $98 to your name, it reminds me so much of that Tina Turner story when she divorced Ike and she said, yeah. "Just I just want my name. So you left all of that you know, things that you had invested in this boutique and left with nothing. But why weren't you ready for a soulmate, you think? Well, my life was great, and I've had lots of relationships. Not lots, but, you know, <laughs> long-term relationships. But the thing that um, I didn't work on was self-love. And um, I always was thinking about other people first or my commitment to my business first. And I really wasn't focusing on loving myself, not in a narcissistic way, but just really um, self-love and self-respect. And what happens is, unless you work on that, you, you're not going to draw the right people to you. And in a relationship, you need to have the person you deserve. And if you don't uh, put out that energy of self-love and self-respect, it's hard to get it back. Wow. It's hard to, to, to receive it. Mm. You know, it's interesting because you got that that information from the astrologer, you were 25. And to your point, you put in the work, you prepare for the landing of love is how I like to think about it. And now right. you're 75 and you're engaged to marry Marty, the <laughs> love of your life, your beautiful couple there. You've been together for 10 years. Um, why take this step now? Why do you believe this is the fulfillment, if you will, of what the astrologer said, but also the fulfillment of the work that you put in to preparing for this soulmate? Yeah, so we actually 
both have very busy schedules. He travels a lot. I work a lot. We have a great deal of mutual respect and, and core um, belief systems. Mm. And we never talked about marriage. It never really meant that much to us because we were so connected in so many ways. But during COVID, we were together morning, <laughs> noon, and night, and we'd never really been that together. Right. And we started to, what, where I'm sitting now, we would meet at five o'clock and talk about Aww. the day. We had our little rituals. We would cook together, and we never did. We always went out to eat. And um, on my birthday, he left a note by the side of the bed saying, what do you think about us getting married? I mean, it's you're sort of like a date to get married. And I looked at the note and I thought, well, I wonder what he means by this. Right. Does he really mean getting married? And he did. And I said, you know, I, I actually think it's a good idea. We really, we like each other a lot and we love each other, but we really understood that being this close even made it better. Mm -hmm. And so I'm waiting for a post COVID sunny day in the <laughs> summer where we can have the biggest dance party yes. ever and just dance and sweat and hug our friends. I love that. Say, I love that. You know what? Married. I love that because your, your philosophy on your life and how you live is just incredible. You have your new book. It's called I Am Invincible. And you talk about aging with power through each of the decades of your life from your 20s, your 70s, and in your 50s. And you've talked about at age 50, making this big decision, I'm 50 now, of just getting rid of everything. You cleaned out your closet. You just got rid of all of the excess and stripped your life down. You were 50 at the time when you did it. I have something to tell you, and you don't know this, and I'm only revealing this now, when you were doing that, I, my friend Andre Leon Talley, who you know, contacted me and said, Norma Kamali is cleaning out her closet. You need to get this coat. You need to get this coat. I, oh didn't, I didn't think about it. He then told my husband. And for my birthday, my husband surprised me with something from your closet. No. And I have never worn it in public. Here it is right now. My husband surprised me. I was supposed to wear it to the Emmys. Oh the Emmys God. didn't happen last year, but this is from your closet. And I think about you in the spirit of what you talked about at age 50, these routes that we go through in life as women, as people to determine who we are, that this journey yes. belongs to us. So thank yes. you for my coat that I didn't get a chance I to wear it. to the Emmys. And thank you to my I husband. <laughs> I, that's really what sustainability is about, where this this jacket has a whole new life experience with you, and I'm, it makes me so happy. Uh, you know, Tamron, 50 is just so incredible. Yeah. It's one of the biggest transitions through the decades, and, and 50... Um, sets the tone for the rest of your life. You know, prior to 50, there are all these milestones you have to meet. But the way you go through 50 and how you reinvent yourself and look what you've done, I mean, you're you're like the textbook example of what can happen at 50. So from here on out, anything is possible. The book is called Invincible. Norma, Thank you so much for being so real and so inspiring. The next time you want to unload anything from the closet, I'll, I'll come by if you need a friend. <laughs> Thank you. It's Thank such an you. honor. And this book is so inspiring. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot.